Alaska India Tango is starting up for Black Angel with four packs. Nice uh, trip to Panama and take some good pictures. Right, we're now leaving Umanak for Black Angel. Um, the old producing mine, we're gonna go and sit down at the camp, have a look around the facilities, the uh, heli hangars, the accommodation block, the port facility, the cable car, etc. And then we'll head on around, have a bit of a mine tour and a prospectivity tour, the Black Angel. We're looking at a, a layered sequence. Uh, it's called the Marmillic Formation. It's a sequence of limestones and pelites. Flying over this last peninsula, there's a bit of uh, lead sink mineralization on this peninsula. Everything after this enters into the Black Angel license. And that is the site of the old vine operations. So they used to have uh, a very large uh, community actually there, uh, working there 12 months of the year. So there's quite a lot of uh, infrastructure still there, but it's more geared now for, for exploration than it is for mining. Welcome, we're here now at Black Angel. So this was a former operating lead zinc mine that was operated by Beleden up until 1990. Uh, started in the 1970s, so a long mining history. In that time, they mined 11.2 million tonnes of somewhere between 14 and 16% combined lead and zinc. So that makes it one of the richest lead zinc operations anywhere in the world. Today it's a suspended operation and AMROC is taking custody of the license both around the mine and the exploration potential around and to the north. What we're looking at behind me now is the Black Angel itself, which is um, the sign for the mine. It's uh, obviously a, a black layering within this marble sequence folded limestone sequencing. You can see all the way through the outcrop around here. And what we've done actually, we've taken a lot of photogrammetry, so it's high resolution photographs from all over the place and that you can make a three dimensional model of where these ore bodies are. So that's been the main focus of mining, the angel and cover ore bodies host the majority of the, the past resource. And they were mined and the ore was brought down, primary crushed by a cable car sequence that comes all the way down to this cable car station down here. And from that point, it was taken concentrated, loaded onto vessels and shipped out through the deep marine port over there. Black Angel is the most successful mine ever operated in Greenland. It was operated for 17 years. If you look into why mines are very successful in Greenland, it's usually low upfront cost, very high grade, and somewhere where you can extend the resources while you are mining, right? And Black Angel has those characteristics. And it was mined uh, through tech resources and then later bullied in. So it's, it's, it was really, really successful mine in that sense. And what we see it as is that similar to what we find in Nalanak, which is also a very successful mine, it gives you a foundation in a geological area that is one of the most exciting areas you can find around the world. So South Greenland, gold and rare earths and copper. Uh, West Greenland herb it's base metals overall. The whole industry knows about that. Yeah, but again, you know, it's just static, isn't it, really? Yeah, I mean, it's a good cleanup. I mean, this is, it's a good shell, good windows. Yeah. Get the heat in here. So that's a little bit of the marmalade limestone. So this is a little bit of the ore body, just in the offices that the geologists would have used to get their eyes familiar with it. So um, it's predominantly, uh, this has got a little bit of uh, copper sulphides in it as well actually, but it's um, sphalerite and galena are the two minerals that we're interested in. Uh, and what we'll see later is where it outcrops. It, in this environment, it weathers to this very sort of golden looking rock at surface. Uh, it's quite spectacular sort of outcrops of it over at the glacier zone, which is uh, part of the growth potential. 
So this is, this is the uh, camp here at Black Angel. So in the distance, we've got the cable car. The cable's reinstalled all the way back up to the mine portal. Beyond that, we've got a deep water port, um, large enough to take all sorts of vessels. And then this lay down area is areas for storage, fuel, fuel bladders, generators, and there's a water purification system as well to provide water for the camp. Behind me, there's also additional storage for core and equipment and um, other stores and mechanical stores. So it's quite a massive area actually, that this would be the centre of our West Greenland hub. So we would have not just accommodation and initial logistics, but we have the ability to bring in ships with equipment uh, to service not only Black Angel, but Black Angel, Kangalusak and further afield for further exploration. The Nungarat tunnel comes out just over here. So that will be the access portal about four kilometres into the Nungarat ore bodies. The ore can come through here, be crushed in this area. You've got all the lay down areas here for equipment. And then the, obviously the cable car over here leading up to the main portals of the Angel and Cover. So the history of this was a mine from 1973 to 1990. And they produced 12 million tonnes. Yes, it will take. We have already a resource here, historical resource of 4 million tonnes. Correct. So the idea being that over the next few years, we try to build that resource up from up to 5, 10 million build, tonnes. Build that resource back up towards 10 million tonnes or thereabouts so that we can have the, the weight behind us, the critical mass of resources to, to restart the mine. The history of this was this cable was actually not just used for personnel. No. So this cable, the, the old cables that were in here used to bring up personnel and equipment, but equally the ore, the crushed ore, back down in the ore bins. So it had a dual purpose. Right now what we need is install these back on so that we can get people, mining engineers, go back in there, server the mine, give us a plan and a playbook for how we rehab that mine. Same thing, exactly the same thing we've done in Nell, like rehab the old mine and get access back into the, to the deep ice areas. I think a lot of people won't realise that this equipment I'm seeing behind me is not stuff from the, you know, <laughs> 90s here. This is... When was it installed? So this was all installed in the early 2000s. Um, so the previous operators sunk about 70% of the capital required to reinstall the cable car for, for access for personnel and equipment back into the mine. So this has all been installed by a Swiss company, um, used to obviously putting in cable cars into the, into the Alps. Yep. So it's, it's, it's fit for purpose. All the uh, monitoring equipment and hardware is all, is all here. I think to install this today from scratch, you're talking about two or three years worth of work and you know many millions of dollars to actually install this. And we've now inherited all of this, ready to go. A little bit more capital to, to, to put the cable cars in and then commission the, the equipment. And then we've got safe access up and down into the mine. This is my first time getting to Black Angel and to see what I'm seeing now really is very impressive as to the head start that we've got. The actual Angel ore body outcrops pretty much just at those portals and then trends, trends into the mountain. We'll go up there later. So James, we're here at the harbour. Obviously these are four incredibly large structures. Yeah. The model in the old days was that they, they, they were mining for 12 months Correct. and then shipping out the concentrate for yeah. six months a year. Is yeah. this a similar model that we see in the future? Yes, yeah, exactly that. So you've got, we're on one of four, affectionately known as the dolphins. This is a deep water harbour, uh, capable of taking vessel, huge vessels. So what they would do is they would operate 12 months a year, crush and concentrate the ore, and then they would ship that off site via this infrastructure out over a six to eight month shipping window. The ice here does freeze in the winter, mm -hmm. um, so there is there's that to play with, but still a very, very profitable operation with a six month shipping window, but a 12 month operating window. I've said from Black Angel itself, it, it will have uh, millions and millions of, of tons of, of ore in addition to the current resources. I'm absolutely certain of that. You just need time 
and, and uh, to drill and define the area properly, right? So already you have in three zones what we call the old mine, uh, the Black Angel Deep Ice Zone, you have the Glacier Zone, you have the Nungurut Zone, and you have the Arc Zone. They hardly had any drilling, but they are exposed to the surface. So you can drill all of that out and define tens of millions of tons of zinc lead silver just within that high-grade zinc. And so it's when it's high-grade, you're less dependent about price fluctuation because you can you, your oil in cost should be low. What we did is that we thought it was prudent to re-assay some of this uh, uh, ore that we have underground uh, in the Angel Zone. We have, have, have about two million tons of something that could be fairly easily readily mined. And looking behind, we found extremely high-grade germanium, cadmium, and, and gallium in that ore. And so that's what we're extremely pleased about because it, it kind of sets us on the map, map to actually run a single lead silver mine. But in addition, there's really, really, really critical minerals that the US and Europe needs now. We're here at the uh, Black Angel International Airport, which is a helipad stuck. I don't know how many, a thousand Kilometer. meters Kilometer <laughs> from the uh, from the fjord. We've flown up here in a helicopter, and I presume this is where you guys will be uh, coming in when you're doing the initial. Yeah, this is the initial access point. We drop off here. We've got a little base of operations, and then we can come in and go into the mine from here. Uh, that's before we've got the cable car all fully installed. But this is the way into the mine currently. Well, I can say, having stood here, it is the most beautiful view I've ever seen. So it is a phenomenal view. I mean, we're surrounded by, again, being a geologist here, all these marbles that are hosting the, the lead sinks. Obviously behind us, out in the fjord across uh, by the camp, over the camp, Kangaroo side over there, and the fjords in the distance. So yeah, it's, it's a huge area. As an economic geologist, I mean, Greenland's a dream to come to because you've got almost 100% exposure pretty much everywhere you go. There's no, there's no soils, there's no vegetation. Uh, to cover the rock. So you've got this pure you know, cross-section of all the uh, interesting geology. So it's a, it's a dream. Um, and uh, yeah, just very privileged to be working on it. Well, it's a total pleasure to be here with you. And as I say, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm pretty good with heights, but this is quite an extraordinary one. So anyway, let's go and see some more of the geology. Let's go. Flown up here, we're at Glacier, which yes. I presume means that this is, as we can probably see, very recently had a glacier on top of it. Yep. Yep. And this is the story of Greenland, isn't it? This is the the thing of the ice caps are receding, the glacier are receding, and it's uncovering these ore bodies. And this, I suppose, is a prime example of that. Yep. So this is on the side of the main um, Black Angel mine. Uh, so this is the largest satellite deposit called Glacier named after the fact that it was recently under undercover from Glacier. The glacier is now over there and continuing to recede. We discussed earlier, talk about benign environment. I mean, it's rock. There's not even lichen. I mean, this is... Yeah, this is all recently exposed from glaciation. Uh, so a good place to mine. There's a lot of space up here. And then you come across this incredible ore, which I've got a piece of in my hand, which is obviously your lead zinc ore. How do you find this? Is this, this is what you're looking for, right? This is how it all starts. Yeah. So this, what we're standing on here is, this is classic, what's termed buckshot ore. So it's this beautiful honeycomb colored um, ore body. Uh, it's predominantly sphalerite, which holds the zinc. And then there's also galena in there, which is the lead. And there's silver within it as well. This is what we're looking for, buckshot ore, and you only need a very small outcrop of it to actually understand that these things are quite depth extensive, strike extensive, and there's a million tons here, just in Glacier, and this, 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 small, out, this small series of outcrops. When you're seeing these, you're, this is indicating to you that we've got these larger scale deposits below. Yeah. You're just sort of the, the, yeah. the, the tip of the iceberg. It's to, it, exactly, it's the tip of the iceberg. So, you know, this is a reasonably large one and it's, it hosts Glacier, but between here and over there, which is, which is Arc and then Deep Ice, which is up, up the hill, there's plenty of space to find more of these. And, the, you know, we want to go and try and find it. It only takes a small outcrop and then we can find a new ore body, a new satellite ore body to bring into the picture. We 
will have approximately 200 people employed to run the mine there. We will have another 100 people exploring in the whole region. You will see towns like Umanak and other towns there uh, growing massively, just like what we have seen in South Greenland. You will see more material uh, in both critical minerals that US and Europe desperately need in this area. And that will be coming relatively quickly uh, compared to the rest of the world. And this will be the next mine built in Greenland. So in summary, I think that Black Angel is a unique opportunity. It's not a distraction from Manilac. It's the next phase in our growth story and our vision to create a Greenlandic legacy.